Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, here in California, and good evening in our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. It is now 8 o'clock p.m. in our nation's capital, and it's 5 o'clock p.m. here on our left coast, on the west coast of the United States of America. We're here today to carry out a tradition that was started quite some time ago. Many years ago, a group of people came here for religious freedom and to do what is right. And they founded a nation from a Mayflower compact, which was a little boat that brought them here. And they said, we're here for the glory of God, the advancement of the Christian faith, and the establishment of a righteous body politic. <clears throat> Politics is not very righteous, but we're still here as a nation. I want to encourage you, if you'd like, to go back to the archives in this program. The one this morning was a very interesting show. The title of the show is Wiley World in Action. My name is Wiley Drake, and it has been my privilege now for 28 years to pastor this church. I have a son named Wiley Jr. I have a grandfather named Wiley. So Wiley world seems appropriate. We had an opportunity this morning to deal with a family situation and that's going to be ongoing. We'll talk more about that in detail as the program develops. But before we go any further, I would say to you, if you're not here in the studio with me and cannot walk into the studio right now, we would welcome you to do as Pac Bell, Ma Bell used to say, let your fingers do the walking in talking about the yellow pages. You could flip through with your fingers through the yellow pages and find almost anything. Now you would say go to Google or Bing or whatever your favorite search engine is. But we're here to be a help. The motto of the Congressional Prayer Conference is pray America back to one nation under God. And that's our goal and that's what we're working on. But most of all, even above that, or beyond that, we want you to know that God so loved the world <clears throat> that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, we do thank the Lord for what is going on. We'll be sharing with you in a little bit about a family that is coming back, or coming to California, excuse me, and we'll talk a little bit about why they're coming and what we're going to do to try to help them as they come to California. We also represent not only the Congressional Prayer Conference, but an organization called Litigation Logistics Litigation Logistics We also represent a company an organization called White Horse Family Rights Council dot live Look that up and you'll find out that we indeed are trying to help families there are a great deal of families all over our nation that are being brutally, I mean brutally, attacked by our nation, by our government. They're being brutally attacked because they're being starved out. They're being told they have to spend lots of money just to be able to keep their kids in their home. Well, let me state a fact for you. God uses a man and a woman to create life. 
And God expects them to be good parents. And I'm not here to say that any parent that's not being good should be cut a lot of slack. We're going to take one of our first callers. Welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. You're live on the air. If you'd like to talk to us, go ahead. If not, just listen in and hold on, but go ahead. Uh, I tried it half a dozen times, and it's just not letting me. It, it won't accept the code I put in, and so I, I don't know why it's not accepting it. Okay, well, I'm not sure why either. Uh, I'm not putting in three nine nine four six zero pounds. No, that's your that's your that's your problem. You're supposed to be putting in three nine nine four three zero. Zero. Correct. Okay, three nine nine four three zero. All right, let me try it again. Okay, bye bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was our producer at large, uh, Mr. J. Stephen Davis, and he called in and made a mistake that quite often people do when they call in on the line. They make the mistake of putting in the wrong number, and then they get mad because the system doesn't work. <laughs> If you would like to call us, call us on 712-432-1690. When you get that, put in your access code 399-430-POUND, and that should put you through our board here in the studio. And uh, we'll see what happens. Are you there? Ladies and gentlemen, we're waiting upon Mr. Davis to call back in and see if the system is working. I think it is. <clears throat> if you'd like to call, call 712-432-1690. Put in your access code 399-430-POUND. And that should get you in uh, to the board. And if it doesn't, do what Mr. Davis did. Call in on my cell phone. My cell phone number is 714-865-8132. Now, let me see if we're still on here. I think we still are. Yes. And uh, we're hoping Mr. Davis is going to be calling shortly. <clears throat> We decided many years ago to research and investigate what was going on in America. People were coming to me as pastor and coming to me as a minister of the gospel and coming to me as a politician and saying, what in the world is going on? Why are they taking children away from families? And, of course, immediately a lot of people say, well, it's because they're bad parents. Well, if you took all the kids away from every bad parent, you'd have to take every kid away because all parents are bad. They're not always bad. They're better than average, probably, most of them. But the social workers and the departments of child protective welfare is saying that if there's the least little problem, we're going to take the kids away. There's two things wrong with that concept. Number one, <clears throat> to take a child away simply because a parent has made a mistake is absolutely ungodly and ridiculous. And so we began to investigate and we found out that for every child that is taken away from a family, for every child that they put into foster care and in adoption, for every one of those children 
that is taken away from their parents, the government receives approximately $5,000 per month. No matter what the charge is, no matter what it is, they end up in the long run getting about $5,000 per month per child. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the motive to take the kids away. The motive is not to protect the children because in many cases the children do not need protecting. The parents just need counseling. And if they need that, they ought to have that. But ladies and gentlemen, most of the children that are taken away by social services, it is done illegally, unethically, and very ungodly. Let me give you an example. There was a case in the court here locally and the judge was listening to the testimony of a social worker. And I noticed that that social worker had paperwork in front of her and she also had a bottle of whiteout. And when it came to the testimony, the judge said, I will hear now from the social services department. And the social services department went on to say that they were suspecting that the child in the family situation was being abused and that it was because of mental illness on the part of one of the parents. And the judge heard their story where they said, yes, the parent is psychologically maladjusted the parent is not a good parent. And the judge asked one final question and said, do you have any paperwork or evidence in this case, Miss Social Worker? The social worker said yes and handed it to the bailiff to be given to the judge. And the judge looked at this and it said, I find psychological problems in this family. And the judge then said, okay, if a psychiatrist said, I find psychological problems in this family, I'm going to grant the custody of the child to the Department of Public Services. What the judge did not know is that that piece of paper he had was indeed typed up. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Davis. Hi, boss. Yeah. Um, I, I tried the, every number there was, and every when the recording came back, the recording gave me a number that is not what I entered. So I don't know why it's not picking it up. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead on this phone. We are evidently are having a technical glitch there. I'm not sure why or what's going on, but... Um, Let's just go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, I have on the line with me, and you'll be able to hear him. You won't see him anyway because he's not here in the studio. But his name is J. Stephen Davis, and he's one of the workers and one of the attorneys and one of the great men of God as a minister of the gospel here that works with what I talked about a while ago, White Horse Family Council. And let me finish my story here, and this is what happened in that courtroom the judge said, look at this paper. It says there, I find psychological problems in the family signed by a psychiatrist. And I suggested to the judge that that was a phony piece of paper because what was originally typed on that paper was, I find no psychological problems in this family and it was signed but what the judge finally saw was that one little two-letter word was whited out 
on the piece of paper that he received. The piece of paper that he received said, I find psychological problems. But before he got that paper, a social service worker had whited out the letters N-O. Because in its original form, the doctor said, I find no psychological problems in this family. And a little white out changed it completely. That's the kind of tricks, that's the kind of thing social workers and social services do. Recently, Mr. Davis and I were in court with Sean McMillan at a week-long trial, longer than a week trial, that proved that seven of the workers in the social services department were found guilty by jury of doing just that kind of falsifying evidence in the court. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we're in deep trouble. We do have on the line with us now, I've finished that story, but we do have on the line with us J. Stephen Davis. Mr. Davis, how are you? Uh, I, I'm slowly getting better. Uh, as our audience knows, uh, every once in a while my uh, disabilities from the airplane crash act up, so that's why I'm not in the studio tonight. Um, I wanted to do a report, though, because something just came across on Sean Kennedy that I think is really interesting, but I did want to in interrupt your train of thought until you're ready. Well, go right ahead. They, uh, Sean Hennedy was interviewing a couple of gentlemen who had worked for DHS, Department of Homeland Security, and they were extremely critical of what Hillary Clinton and Obama had done with DHS, and the two things they brought up, which was very interesting, is they just flat said that Hillary and uh, Obama had lied about the uh, video in Benghazi having anything to do with it. Um, and they also brought up Bill Haney's um, book and what happened to him. So it was interesting that Sean Kennedy uh, was interviewing these two guys. And so then he asked them the $64,000 question, which is, are you being asked to come to work for the Trump administration to um, get all of this worked out? To which they said, yes. And he said, is Phil Haney going to come back and to help work it out? And he said, we can't discuss that yet. Interesting. So what it sounds like is one of the things that they were talking about is the incredible amount of uh, inner information that Obama had ordered, um, erased, destroyed, and the amount of information that Hillary had ordered, destroyed, and to the point that it put the United States at risk. Now, this is what my humble opinion is, bearing in mind that you know, I'm retired uh, law enforcement, um, got a bar number here in California, used to teach at the uh, National Fire Academy, so I'm a little familiar with both state and the federal law. In my humble opinion, what they describe is absolute treason. That they were doing things that put the United States public at risk, and that is treason. Amen. Well, we know that that's been done a lot of times and continues to happen. False evidence uh, has been permitted and false testimony and many other things. And uh, we find that not only in our social services department, but we find it in all other departments. Just to give you an example, many of you have heard of the Bundy Ranch standoff of 2014. There were a group of Christian pastors and ranchers that went to that standoff and stood up against BLM, Bureau of Land Management. 
And the BLM, when they got there, were fully armed with long guns and handguns. And yet, if you go on computer, if you go on and find out about agencies, be it the FBI, the CIA, or whatever, you can find out which of those agencies are indeed authorized to carry weapons. And that's an open subject on... Well, there, there's, there's an even easier way to, to figure it out. Go ahead. If he or she is a federal agent, when they give you their title, if they do not say special agent, then they're not authorized to have a firearm. And I had never heard of a BLM person introducing themselves in all of the reports and all of the stuff I've looked at as being a special agent for the BLM. Well, and they're not because that's not what they are. They are Bureau of Land Management. That is, they study the data, they study the conditions, and they file reports and they do by primarily a pretty good job most of the time. But for them to be fully armed at this standoff, if you will, there in Bunkerville, Nevada, for them to be fully armed was absolutely a violation of the law. And, uh, well, here's the, here's the other thing that I'm hoping is going to change, and you haven't heard the media talk about it yet, and you haven't heard... Uh, any of the Democrats talk about it yet, but here's what I am hoping. This, it, this sounds a little unusual, and I expect everybody to Google it after I tell them, but under the United States Constitution, there is no title or status of nobility. And what that means is everybody in the United States is supposed to be treated exactly the same. Now, what we have a problem with is these government agents that are just flat violating criminal law right and left, but they're never getting arrested or prosecuted. Hmm. That has to stop. I agree. And what I'm hoping Trump will do is Trump is going to put the word out, guess what, guys? If you violate the law, you have to be prosecuted. Well, you're absolutely right, and uh, it seems that always the wrong people are being prosecuted. As many of you know, Clive and Bundy and men from, and women from the Bundy Ranch were prosecuted and put in jail, been in jail for almost, almost a year, and uh, they still have to go back to trial. Even though they were, uh, and what's really bad about that? that this is from a ha having been a trial attorney and uh, stuff. Here's what's really bad about that: they were taken to trial twice. Not the first one, not guilty, all charges. Yeah. Now, once that uh, jury handed that down, then the prosecutor and the judge should have said, "Okay, guess what." The case isn't as strong as we thought it was. We're going to release them on bail. And for them, the prosecutor and the judge, to keep them um, in custody without a conviction in violation of their right to bail is outrageous. Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, not only is that outrageous that that has happened and continues to happen, but now the furtherness of the outrageousness is the fact that on February the 14th, on Valentine's Day, Clive and Bundy and the other Bundys and other men and women have to go back to court. And we're encouraging you, if you can be boots on the ground, to join us in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the courthouse. And we'll have the name of that courthouse later, but it will be on February the 14th 
in Las Vegas, and that's where uh, a judge by the name of Anna Brown will be in charge. Clive and Bundy and his dear wife Carol will be there. Carol's not been charged, just her husband. But uh, there'll be many of us there. We're going to be boots on the ground. In fact, the week of February the 13th, the week of February the 13th, the Wiley Drake Show will be on location. And we will be on location in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, on February uh, the 14th, which is Tuesday, Valentine's Day, the court will hear that case one more time. But on the 13th, which is Monday, on the 13th, which is Monday, the Wiley Drake Show will be on location in Las Vegas. We'll do our show there on Monday, and we'll be over there again to do our live show from Las Vegas on Valentine's Day on the 14th. And if you would and like... Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, here's a request we make. Pastor Drake spends an incredible amount of time, energy, and money taking these causes up and holding the federal government to account. And I am amazed what he's able to accomplish. But, unfortunately... All of these things require a little bit of overhead. So what I would ask you is, is for some reason, because you have to work, you're going to school, or something else, what you have to do, you can be prayer in the air, but not uh, boots on the ground. If you can send us a check, and it's whatever amount that you feel you can afford, and on the memo line, put money on it, that way we can do the uh, accounting on it. That will help us, because obviously we're going to have to rent a place to stay and be able to buy food while we're in Las Vegas. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you do want to be a part of it, there's, like he said, three ways to do it. Number one, be boots on the ground. Go to Las Vegas, be there with us. Be in the courtroom or outside the courtroom. The courtroom probably will fill up and they'll leave overflow outside. That's number one. Number two, if you can't do that, and we know not everybody can drop what they're doing and go to Vegas. Uh, so you can be there with us, though, the same way Mr. Davis is with us right now, by telephone. And you can call that phone number, 712-432-1690, and it will ask you for an access code, and that's 399-430-POUND, and you can be joined in to the studio by telephone line. That's the prayer in the air. So you can be prayer in the air or boots on the ground. And if you can't do either, you've got to be at work, you can't get to your phone, you can't go to Vegas, we would appreciate any financial support you could give us Everything we do is done under the auspices of the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship. Now, we have all of these other organizations that we associate with, we work with, and we pray with, and pray for, but none of the money is mingled. Whatever expenses we have comes out of church funds. And whatever you donate to the church, of course, would go for that. So if you'd like to be there with us, join us. If you'd like to be prayer in the air, call the prayer line number. And if you'd like to donate, send a check or money order or cash, whatever you want to send, to the First Southern Baptist Church. First Southern Baptist Church. And I give you my words, you'll get a very nice thank you letter. Amen. And the address that you send that to is 6801-6801 Western Avenue in the city of Buena Park. And the zip is 90621. I'm going to repeat that address again. That's 
1-800-242-0101 Western Avenue in the city of Buena, B-U-E-N-A, Buena Park, California. The zip code is 90621, and I would encourage you to do that. Now, we had a very special show this morning, and I would encourage you, if you'd like to see that, go to thewileydrakeshow.com and click up at the top right under my little silhouette of me. Click on that spot that says archives, archive, and you'll be able to play this morning's show, and you'll be able to play this show later as well. But click on that and check that out. And I say that to say we titled the show this morning Wiley World in Action. Several months ago, and let me give you the whole story. Several months ago, I had a mother in her 30s call me and say, Pastor Drake, they're trying to take my children away from me. In fact, they've taken them away, and I finally got them back, but they're trying again to take my 12-year-old and my 6-year-old away from me. And we're losing the battle. Can you help? And I said, yes, we'll help. So this family is in Texas. They have met as a family with the patriarchs of the family, the members of the family, and they have decided that in the state of Texas they're not going to get justice. They've decided that if they stay in the state of Texas, their children will be taken away from them and put in foster homes and then eventually adopted out. Now, I've had the opportunity to interview the parent, the mother, and there's no way in the world she would try to tell you that she's a perfect parent. None of us would do that if we're in our right mind. But she's not done anything terribly wrong. She's not been a drug addict. She's not been an alcoholic. She's not hurt the children. Uh, but social services thinks she's not a good mother. And I said before, when they do that, when they put a case together and they decide that a mother or a parent, father is not a good parent, they take their children away and there's an incentive for Child Protective Services. You say, oh, they're just trying to protect the children. No. Every child that they take away from a parent's custody, they get, they being the government, get $5,000 plus per month for that child. So there okay, is... Let's, let's, let's think about that, ladies and gentlemen. If you take a child away from the parents, and you get paid for the child, isn't that slavery? Well, sounds like it to me. So anyway, this lady said, what can I do? And I said, well, we know that typically in these cases, you get an attorney and you file a case and you file a you know, complaint. She did that and spent all the money she had. And then the attorney couldn't do anything. And so that's where we step in. We're not an attorney. I'm not. Mr. Davis is. But we step in and we tell them, you couldn't get justice in the court of law, but we can bring it before the court of public opinion. So we're going to bring that case, all the details of it. Quite often, social services only give you one snapshot of the picture rather than the whole picture. So we're going to give you the whole story right here on the Wiley Drake Show. In the days ahead, that mother and those two children will be on this broadcast, on this television program, with us. Now, they're coming to California. And they'll be staying at a sanctuary here in California. And they'll be going to school here in California. <clears throat> and they'll be maintaining their family together. So you pray for us as we 
help people fight this fight. We talked about it this morning on the show, and we're talking about it again tonight. But we want you to know, folks, we have an organization called White Horse Family Rights Council, and it's C-O-U-N-C-I-L. White Horse Family Rights Council dot live. There's a lot of times social services tell a mom, you're weak, you're sickly, you should abort your baby. That would be the worst thing she could do. First of all, because it would murder a baby. Second of all, if a mother is pregnant and she aborts a baby, it causes her whole system to go into shock. And so it can literally cost her her life. We have been down to Wichita, Kansas. We've been to other spots in the nation where mothers died on the way to the emergency room because the abortionist, the murderer, uh, ripped her uterus, ripped something in doing it, and so she was on her way to the emergency room, and some of them died because of the botched murder that was att being attempted. So, we're here to fight. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the white horse stands for God, victory from God. Family rights, of course, are what God gives us. As a parent, I have certain rights by God-given rights. And they're supposed to be protected by the Constitution. But unfortunately, they're not in many cases. So I would encourage you to pray for those families that are fighting this battle. I would pray that you would help support. We're bringing this lady in. I had to explain to her, I don't have a budget to fly you to California. Would be to God I had a budget that would say, yeah, we'll buy you an airplane ticket. We did assist her, not financially, but assist her by directing her and helping her find out where she could get the most economical flight. And as it turned out, our help was a little bit, but she found a local person in Texas that found even a better deal for her. And so she's working on that as we speak. And so would be to God you could make a donation to us so when that happens next time, we can say to the mom or the pop and the kids, come on out to California. We'll put you up at our church sanctuary. And we're going to put this mom's children in the local school. And we're going to give them a place to live here at the church sanctuary. Now, it's not a fancy hotel. But it is a comfortable, clean, safe environment. And they'll be living here at the church. They'll be fed two meals a day, a place to sleep and eat and shower and so forth. And we're going to help that family. And that's why I was saying that's Wiley World in action. We told her that we only want to have her there for about 30 days. And that's true, but we're not going to kick her out if it comes up and we need to keep her longer. But uh, the only reason we have the ruling of 30 days is so that we can help other moms and dads that need a place as well. So if you could pray with us and pray for us, we'd appreciate it. And if you can make a donation, that'd be great as well. Now, Mr. Davis, is there anything else you have today? <clears throat> well, it's amazing the, the number of games are still playing with this election. Uh, today, uh, I think they were finally able to figure out that no, the Russians didn't interfere with the election, that it was an insider who released the emails because uh, the insider did not want Hillary Clinton to be president. Hmm. And so the insider turned all of that information over to WikiLeaks. Um, uh, Justin Assange was interviewed today and he uh, revealed all of that information. So, once again, anybody that is saying, oh, it's all the Russians' fault, 
know it isn't. Well, we know that there's a great deal of illegalities that have been uncovered uh, from all walks of life, if you will, politically speaking. And we're hoping that that will all work its way out as the Electoral College meets and votes and takes care of that. But in the meantime, we would ask you to pray for Mr. Trump and others as they are appointed, as they take on appointments and so forth. And uh, we want you to know we will continue to pray. We will continue to help uh, not only politically abuse people, but those that have their family split up and taken away from them. I know of a young lady not too far from here that had three, three children in a family and they were in a preschool and they were going to be taken away from the preschool because the parents were not good parents according to social services. And so they took them away and we're going to put them in foster care. You say, well, what's wrong with that? Well, it was three siblings, two little girls and a little boy. They loved each other dearly. And now they were going to be ripped apart, put in a stranger's home. Now, you say, well, that's necessary to protect the children. No, it wasn't. Because in that particular case, a young lady, single young lady, said, I don't want to see those kids split up. I want them to be kept together. And social services recommended that the only way that could happen is that if someone would adopt those three children. And that lady indeed adopted those three children. And now they have a family. They didn't have to be split up. So there's all kinds of ways for this kind of terribleness to be averted. And that's what we do here. We not only tell people about Jesus, we not only do missions work all over the world, but we indeed help moms and pops keep their families together. That's what the White Horse Family Rights Council dot live is all about. Go to that website, White Horse Family Rights Council, C O U N C I L, White Horse dot live. Uh, dot live, yeah, dot live. And uh, that's because we help people that are being told their only option is to murder their baby. We have men and women who call themselves doctors and say to parents sometimes, if you, and I've seen this happen hundreds of times, if you go ahead and give birth to that child, you will die. And they tell the mother that. The condition you have, your health, if you give birth to that child, you will die. And you know sometimes they're right. Sometimes the mothers go ahead and give birth, and they do indeed die. But hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, they have been told, if you proceed to birth that baby, you're going to die. And the mother said, I'm going to get a second opinion from Jesus. And Jesus said, trust me. And many the time, the doctors have said, that woman's going to die in childbirth. And guess what? She didn't. She didn't die in childbirth, nor did the child die. The child was born normally and happy. And that's what's going on over and over again. And yet, the system wants to protect those women from their saying, death uh, by birth. And nothing could be farther from the truth. Now, is there anybody else on the line that would like to share? I just checked our prayer line and I was able to get in on another phone. So it's working at least from this end. <laughs> I don't know what happened before, but... Anything else, Mr. Davis? No, sir. 
All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do two things for me. I want you, number one, to listen up just for a moment. And I want to remind you that God reminds me as a pastor to remind you as a member of the church, you as a listener to this program, I want to remind you and me that God said, if any two agree in prayer touching anything, God said, I will hear your prayer and answer it. So I want to ask those in the studio and those on the line and those in the air to agree with me as I have a special prayer for my brother in Christ, for the attorney on staff here, and for all of those other things rolled into one, J. Stephen Davis, and I want to pray to the Lord for his healing. As many of you know, many years ago, he was in a plane crash and ended up with a damaged foot and leg and almost died. In fact, they said, this guy's going to die. But guess what? The doctors were wrong again. There might have been somebody that would come along and say, hey, the doctor says Dr. Davis is going to die. So why don't you, family member, just give him a pill and let him go ahead and die? Well, not being critical of the doctors, but they were wrong. He did not die, and he's very much alive today. He still has some suffering from it, but he is still alive today, contrary to the doctor's decision that he would die. And so, ladies and gentlemen, would you just simply, as I pray, say yes to the Lord that you agree. Father, I pray for Stephen Davis. I pray for the Holy Spirit of God to touch his body and to touch especially the foot where he's been injured. And I pray, Lord, that you would bring the healing that only Dr. Jesus can bring to him. And I pray this in the precious and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, yes and amen. Yes and amen. Yes and amen. And um, we do want to remind you that Dr. Davis is the producer of this show. And uh, if you would like to be on this show, you don't have to have a terrible case to talk about. You could have, uh, as one lady, I had a lady in here this morning, and she said she's not written a book, but she wants to help here at our shelter. And so we're going to bring her on board. We're going to let her come on board and help people. Her name is Kathy. And while we were meeting with her and talking to her, to Kathy about how she could help here at the church, another lady came up and said, I want to volunteer to help as well. Guess what? Her name was Kathy. So we had two ladies today Come here and say, we want to come. We don't need any pay. We don't need anything except an opportunity to minister to hurting people. And so Kathy and Kathy are going to be coming on with us, getting involved in our church, getting involved in the White Horse Family Rights Council, getting involved in all that we do here at Wiley World, and these two ladies are going to be sharing their lives with our people. And I want you to pray for those dear ladies. We'll have them on the program a little later. Not today, but in the days ahead. We'll have them on the program with us. So you can meet them and see them. And not only know to pray for them by name, but can see them. And I promise you a blessing from that meeting when they do come on the show. Now, is there anything else anybody would like to share at this time? Yes. We have two very important things okay. that are going to happen in the next couple of days. Tomorrow night, we're going to have a very special Christmas music concert. Yes. I'm just getting the, the time on that because I don't have to have a card in front of me. Well, it's, it's, it's at 730 
And it's here at the church, 6801 Western Avenue in the city of Buena Park, 730 for a concert of Christmas. Great music, great testimonies, and we'll have a great time together here at the church uh, with our Hispanic congregation and our Caucasian congregation and our Japanese congregation, our Korean friends, and so forth. And so we would encourage you to come. 7.30! And be sure and come hungry because we're going to have a big meal after the concert. The next thing that's coming up, and let's uh, talk about what happened today. One of the things that Pastor Drake and I have been keeping you informed of was this murderous, terrorist thug who went into a church in South Carolina, attended a Bible study, and when it was over, he killed nine people, mm. shot them dead. Uh, uh. And his, uh, his justification was because he was white, and they were African American. He wanted to start a race war. Hmm. Now, let me tell you why that's so bizarre. And we had that happen in California. Yep. By a very insane person. And do you remember who he was? He killed Sharon Tate. Hmm. Um, Charlie. Charlie. So he, that was the same thing he wanted, was he wanted to start a uh, race war. Yeah. So they found him guilty of first-degree murder of all nine of the brethren that he murdered. And so we certainly wish to say prayers to God for thanking him for getting justice for the families. And we need to pray for some care for um, and support and strength for the families. You know, I'm sure this has been a very emotionally trying, no pun intended, uh, event for them. He will not get sentenced until next month, mm -hmm. and the issue is whether or not he's going to get a life without possibility of parole or the death penalty. Well, now, go ahead. The reason why that's important is that a killing was one of the reasons why Pastor Drake and I developed the alert anti-terrorist course and we have a class a special class coming up on Saturday ordinarily we um, market the class primarily to adults but this time because of the threats being made to school and malls and other places where children congregate, mm -hmm. we have expanded it to any kind of child or grandchild, 12 or over, that would like to learn how to survive when an armed bad guy shows up. And ladies and, and gentlemen, this is a... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a class starts at 9, but we'd like you here at 8.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, it's here at the First Southern Baptist Church, 6801 Western Avenue, Wayna Park, California. You can text either me at 951-261-0799. Put in the word alert, your name, phone number, and how many people you wish to bring, and I will get a hold of you as soon as I can. If for some reason I'm in court and can't do it, then you can text Pastor Drake at the following number. 714-865-8132. And I'm going to repeat back Mr. Davis's number to make sure I got it right. 951-261-0799. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely correct. All right. And uh, we do encourage you to come. It's an all-day affair. Dress comfortable because you're going to be learning with your hands on how to take a fully automatic assault rifle away from a bad guy and how to turn it on him away from you, as well as a handgun, as well as a knife. And we want you to be trained. And it's a family affair, uh, this particular training session. 
and uh, anybody that comes, it's, uh, uh, I think, uh, give the prices, would you, Mr. Davis, for the class? Well, first of all, I do have to put out that there is an interesting rumor about this class. Yeah. And that rumor is that the class that I'm going to give will be Well, I can guarantee you that is a valid rumor because I am that pastor and one of those students is my 16-year-old grandson by the name of Sage. And my 12-year-old just turned 12 a few days ago. My 12-year-old girl, uh, granddaughter, uh, Elizabeth. And so the two of them are going to be there for the training and I would encourage you to come uh, bring your grandkids. They have to be 12 or older, but uh, we would encourage you to come and be a part of it. And uh, But I believe the charge is $50 per person, right? It is, it is $50 for an individual, but if you're going to bring a family, so if it's you and your grandchildren, or you, your wife, and kids or grandkids, then we will cover the entire group for $100. Amen. And we... Uh, Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, we're not doing this to raise money, obviously, uh, at the price of 50 and $100. We're doing it to try to cover a little bit of the cost. That won't even take care of all the costs, but it'll cover part of it. And uh, so I would encourage you to come and, and pay the fee. Or if you want to pay it for somebody, that's all right, too. Uh, I uh, decided as a grandpa that I wouldn't burden my uh, grandchildren with having to pay for them, so I'm going to pay for them. And I would encourage others you to do to. I'm a preacher, and I'd like to ask you to practice what I preach and preach what I practice. <laughs> and so we would encourage you to be involved. Now, uh, we do thank you for being with us today. We're running a little close on time, but uh, we do want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, all of you of all ages remember when we used to have what they call drop and roll exercises here in California. And they told you that if the earthquake hit, you're to drop and roll over. And that was how you would help save your life. And uh, there were other times of floods and fires. People were told to watch and to prepare themselves for these disasters. We at the Southern Baptist Convention, the largest Protestant convention in the nation, uh, we have a disaster relief team. And uh, so we practice that. Part of disaster relief is a feeding program where people come and learn how to feed mass meals to people that are in uh, hurricanes or floods and that kind of thing. So this ongoing alert training is the same thing in preparation, but it's just stepped up another notch because the bad guys have started bringing in guns. It's no longer a shake, rattle, and roll earthquake. It's no longer just fire and flood. It's a man and his wife that went into San Bernardino with an automatic weapon and killed 14 people. And it's also escalated down to a group down in Florida, I believe it was. And they killed 49 people. And so, folks, we better learn how to defend ourselves, not only against fire and flood and those kind of things, but against the terrorist Islamic bad guys, and that's what this training class is all about. So be a part of it. Anything else before we go? Somebody just sent me a very interesting play on words. What is that? They sent me a picture of a wooden with straw in it, much as you've seen before in representations of Bethlehem and Christ's birth, but they have the title of it as being a king-size bed. A king-size bed, amen. I love that. What a great pun coming from Mr. Punster himself. But I love that because it's Christmas time, and it is a king-size bed there in the manger. Ladies and gentlemen, I've turned the phone off so no one else has called in. And I'm going to make my way over to the console. 
And uh, uh, Brother Davis, any other word before we go off? Ladies and gentlemen, in this uh, time of Merry Christmas and other holidays, we need to be appreciative of what God has given us. We need to thank Him for the many gifts, favors, and graces He shows us. We need to remember to say our prayers for our first responders and to recognize what we have and have been given and be grateful for it because that's what makes people better people. So Amen. in Jesus Christ's name, please say those prayers and we will talk to you tomorrow. Amen. Good day and God bless.